This is NI Connect 2024. I'm Norm, an offering manager for ADG, and we're gonna be talking about RF to bits devices and what NI is bringing to the market with the digital signal transceivers. It's the personality for our open FPGAs and uh, allows you to basically reestablish a link to your device under test that's directly sampling RF and up to maybe six to four giga samples a second. So one of the things that we know is that in the marketplace, we have devices like this from ADI, capable of sampling over 10 giga samples a second, right? directly able to sample the entire bandwidth of your RF spectrum of inches. The challenge is there's a bunch of analog ports on it, but a bunch of RF engineers that are used to having analog on both sides to test their components no longer have that. They only have a high-speed serial connection, but they've got to figure out what to do with it. Now, a variety of uh, customers, maybe even yourself, have been solving this by connecting to an FPGA. Now, those FPGAs might be something like this evaluation board that has from ADI also, where that cleanly made stuff onto that and there's some software that'll merge those together but basically there's five fpgas on here just to deal with the high speed serial stream and other things and a microcontroller and basically what you would do is you'd probably connect over usb or uh, over ethernet to control and to get your information off of this and it's a very functional workflow once again for evaluation but what we're seeing is in the industry these devices don't stay like this for long. They grow up into something more realistic like this, basically four channel transmit receive module, so. where we're sampling at 500 mega samples, just about 500 mega samples a second across the front panel, in and out. And what ends up happening is that data needs to go somewhere, or it wants to transmit that signal and it needs data to be supplied to it because it doesn't know what to swap, it doesn't know what to generate, you need to give it information. Well, normally if this was an analog device, you would just have a vector signal transceiver where you, or uh, even a VNA like you have in the chassis here as well, to go ahead and put your signal through your device in either direction, a transmit receive mod. Well, unfortunately, you can no longer just use analog instrumentation because oh, half of the device is now gone. But what people like yourself probably want is to still have an instrument on the other side. So what ends up happening is people keep trying to turn devices like this into instruments or their own FPGA dev board into instruments or their own custom stone board. They're trying to make instrumentation just to deal with the high-speed serial stream. Well, that's not really a great experience. And also, uh, the programs and the missions will last for a long time, and it's not going to scale over time. And it's also not going to scale across number of devices. When ADI made this, they had no illusions of stacking eight of these high and being able to control all of them at the same time. That wasn't what it was designed for. to be set up. With our digital signal transceiver, which once again, it's a personality on top of our open FPGA, we've basically reconnected what I call the analog hug, but we've got analog and digital instrumentation on both sides of your device, now giving you the ability to have an instrumentation experience. So what's that instrumentation experience? Well, what do you expect from an instance? I expect for the ability to visualize my configure and visualize my information. I also expect to be able to say for generation, I want to have custom waveforms uploaded. I either want to stream the information to or from this. I want to be able to trigger and synchronize with other instruments in the system, right? These are common things done in efficient tests. I mean, so really what we're trying to do is not only provide an interactive experience for once again, generation and analysis through the high speed serial digital pipe, but what we're also doing now is giving an API that matches what you would do for an RF instrument. And once again, what would you expect to have on an RF instrument? Uh, center frequency. Yeah, span, number of records, number of samples, or a lot of things just like that. And so really what we're saying here, what we're showcasing here today, if kind of look over here to the what, we are analyzing the output of the device under test. And we're stimulating it basically with a waveform, a custom waveform in our DST generation. And we're leveraging Instrument Studio Pro here to go ahead and set things like the trigger and set the phase offset and the gain of that digital generation. And of course, we have multiple VSTs in the system. And so that gives us the ability to very easily look at multiple channels of RF simultaneously, giving us the ability to do port to port phase differences, amplitude differences. And we can even modify some of the values over here. And you can see that top graph change some where we're looking at, or we got here, uh, we're on channel, well, there we are. So you can see that the album. So as the device changes, we're seeing the output of the device change in line with that. Now that's our analog analysis. That's no surprise there. We've been doing that for a while now. But over here to the right, we have it a little bit different. Yeah. We're stimulating all four ports of the device under test with a very specific signal. Obviously you can see it up there, very interesting looking. 
But that signal is not just going to samples that go on a disk to go to some MATLAB script that runs slow off on somebody else's computer. We are giving an instrumentation experience that gives you the ability to once you have a look, not only at your complex data, do some spectral analysis, but also the other parts that we're looking to do is actually give the full suite of measurements that are currently capable on our analog RF platform with basically our digital RF platform, which effectively is the DST in this space. And so really taking a kind of a, a step back in a maybe a thousand foot view of Lily, what are we looking at here? Well, if you're scratching your head and saying, wait, which one's analog and which one's digital? And then I've done my job right. Athlete. Because it should be seamless for you as an engineer to do the job because you care about the cigarette. You don't necessarily care about the serial protocol. You would rather probably have that abstracted out of the way. You want to get to your data as fast. You want to get to your insights fast. And the ways that you're going to do that are getting out of the box interactivity. And then also the ability to have on API that was built for automation. And that's really that other step that you don't see here, but we've created a, basically the, the twin, the digital twin, if you will, of the API for our RF instrumentation. Well, for our analog RF instrumentation, to keep it clear. And now we've used that same API to create the API for our digital only RF instrumentation. And so that personality that we're putting on that top of that open FPGA, which is still customizable, it, act, it needs to be customized because you have to put your specific serial protocol on. But once you customize that one part of that FPGA to put your serial protocol to take whatever, you know, Margesi, whatever Certis protocol really it is, and transform that onto samples on the FPGA, the phone, all of the rest of the experience comes along for the ride, and you're no longer doing more work on the FPGA just to make an RF instrument. You're a designer, you're a developer, you want to do the measurements. You don't want to be developing an instrument. So what we're doing is giving you the opportunity to do your job and leave the instrumentation to the instrumentation companies while still getting you the opportunity and to have the open platform that you'd want either from RF or digital and customize it to your needs. So hopefully that's clear. Hopefully you see the future. This is still a little pre-release, but we're looking for input and insights in terms of what are your serial protocols that are needed? Uh, what are the measurements that you absolutely need out of a box? So that we can make sure that this technology leading industry leading implementation uh, stays at the forefront and it gives you what you're looking for. Openness, speed, interactivity, and I'll automate again. Hopefully that's going to make the build for your digital transit receive modules or anytime you're working with RF to bits devices. Thank you very much.